Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to a very special preview for a game mode included in the upcoming title, Homeworld 3. <laughs> yeah, now you all know that Homeworld 3 is due to release in February of 2024, and I am unabashedly very excited about that. But what you may not know is included in that game will be a special online co-op mode called War Games, a group roguelike experience in a real-time strategy setting. Pretty interesting. Well, I am lucky enough to be sponsored today by Gearbox Publishing to give you guys an early, early look at this new game mode and what it's going to introduce into Homeworld 3. So, of course, a very big thank you to them for that. And if, as you guys are watching this video, you're feeling a bit hyped and you want to learn more, well, then there will be a link in the description down below, and I would encourage you to click on that. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into War Games, and I'll show you how this works. And here we go. Oh, doesn't this look familiar? Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so what is War Games? Well, as I alluded to before, this is a new online co-op mode for Homeworld 3 that is intended to blend real-time strategy with roguelike inspirations. You can play by yourself, but it is recommended to play with up to two friends. And with your combined fleet power, you'll be facing down a randomized set of combat challenges. Those challenges are going to be somewhat randomized. You could be escorting some civilian vessels, or you could be taking down enemy transports or capital ships that are invading your space. And along the way, you're going to be discovering some special artifacts. Now, artifacts are cool because they're going to add that extra randomized replayability you're looking for in a roguelike experience. Every time you find one, you're going to be given a choice between three different power-ups, which are going to boost up your fleet in some way or another. And every player on your team is going to get a different set of randomized options. With a little bit of luck and some careful planning, this can allow you to buff your fleets in some pretty cool ways. And this is especially potent in co-op mode, when you should be communicating with your allies to talk about what artifact options you've got and how you can best specialize your fleets in the armada so that you'll be able to help supplement their weaknesses. So for example, one player might get some artifacts that get them really strong with their strike craft, while another is really good with anti-fighter corvettes, and the third is really good with long-range torpedo frigates. And between the three of you, you can focus your production on where you are strongest and back each other up in a way that's going to let you take on any threat in the rest of the game mode. Personally, I think that's pretty dang cool. Now, getting back to the war games, there are going to be three missions in a single run. The first two are going to have randomized objectives, as I said before, that could involve some scouting objectives or escorting civilians or assaulting and capturing a point, etc, etc. The third mission ultimately is your challenge mode, where the enemy is be throwing everything they've got at you. You need to knock out several key points and then take on a final boss, but we'll come back to that one later. So for this particular run right now, you can see that I am playing solo, though I will show some footage of some co-op gameplay a little bit later on. And maybe you're already familiar with the Homeworld series and you're gonna notice this feels very true to form for the first two games. You're gonna have your carrier and using that, you're going to be producing some various different ships which will form up your fleet. Most important thing to do at the beginning of the game, of course, is to get some resource collectors so you can start finding some resource units and bringing those back, which you'll use for research and for constructing new ships at the carrier. But beyond that, we can, of course, launch some strike craft, which can include your interceptors, your bombers, and we'll be able to build up some corvettes or some frigates. And the frigates have several different flavors. I think the most important thing we can do is just start building up some basic strike craft. I'm thinking interceptors, because as I send my resource collectors to gather up some resources, you may have already noticed, there have been some hostile contacts. They're going to start off with most just strike craft of their own, so being able to intercept them is going to be the best thing for me, just to protect my resource generation while I get my carrier in position and start ramping up. And while I'm doing that, can I please point out just how absolutely gorgeous everything is? I mean, the map and the ships look great. And just wait until you get to the next level and you can see the lighting effects. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Another cool thing to see here is you'll notice in this first level, like we're surrounded by a lot of space debris from some massive ancient ship. Cool thing about Homeworld 3 is you actually can use the terrain to try and shield your ships in some way or another. So if you want to sneak your strike craft along the, uh, the, the derelict here, in order to protect them from enemy fire until they're in position, you can totally do things like that. I mean, that's always been one of the coolest things about Homeworld 3 is it was truly 3D space, but now with three-dimensional obstacles, it just takes it to the next level. 
And, uh, oh, you know, it actually occurs to me, I probably should have mentioned what my objective is in this first mission. So, my random objective this time is to intercept and destroy some enemy transports. And my entire goal right now is to build up enough of a fleet that we can punch through the enemy and destroy those transports. And they do have a pretty hefty amount of health, so we're gonna need a lot of firepower. Right now, what I'm trying to do with that is build out a fleet of assault frigates. So, the regular assault frigate is an anti-strike craft frigate. It's really, really powerful, great at knocking down enemy fighters. You definitely want to have some of these in your fleet no matter what. But I also got, through some of my artifacts, a special, uh, unique blueprint called a beam assault frigate. And that thing actually is going to be able to do a lot of capital ship damage. So, I'm building out both of those plus as much strike craft as I can manage. And between all of that, I think I should have enough firepower. So yeah, we're engaging these guys right now. And as you can see, they've got a lot of health, but we should have enough firepower at this point to destroy them before they reach their exit points. As long as we do that, we will be able to complete our objective in this mission. And in the meantime, I'm gonna continue trying to defend as many resource points as possible and gather up everything I can. Because when we finish up with this objective and move on to the next mission, we take all of our ships with us. So I wanna have as strong of a fleet as possible before we finish and move on to the next mission. Okay, that got a little uncomfortably close, but we did manage to destroy those, which means I get some extra artifacts for completing my objectives. Since I'm focusing so much on assault frigates, I think I'll go ahead and upgrade those, and then... Uh, probably the torpedo frigates, because while I'm very good at taking down enemy fighters, I could use some long-range uh, anti-capital ships in my armada. So, let's take that. Once you've completed your objective, you can stick around to continue uh, gathering up resources if you want to, or building up more ships, but the enemy will be spawning endless waves, and they will whittle you down over time, because there's a finite amount of resources on the map. So, what you can do at any point is just initiate hyperspace and jump to the next level. And we are now arriving in the second mission, and you may have already noticed the beautiful lighting effects I was promising. It just looks great. Now, for this particular preview of War Games, I and other press members and other content creators all have a preset group of maps to play with, so we all have seen the same stuff. If you watch any other videos, you're going to see the exact same maps. My understanding is that is not the intention on release, though. There's going to be a lot of different maps to choose from randomly. So, not only are you going to have randomized objectives, but you're going to have a lot of other randomized eye candy to enjoy. Anyway, for right now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and move my fleet in position to protect a bunch of different resource points, gather up everything I can, deal with any straggling forces, and we're going to wait for our new objective. No, it looks like we're going to have to deal with enemy transports uh, exactly the same as last time. Okay, like I said, it is randomized. We just happen to get the same thing twice in a row. I've had a lot of other things happen, though. Um, we've had to escort some civilians, which is usually not too bad, as long as you got a lot of anti-fighter support. Uh, I've had to kind of play capture the hill and assault and control a particular point, or maybe even assassinate a target that is trying to escape. Those are the kind of objectives you can expect. I also expect even more objectives will be added into the game when they do get to final release, or throughout the continued development of the game, because that's something developers have talked to me about, is they do intend on continuing to build up this roguelike aspect. They really enjoy Enjoy war games, they're a fan of roguelike titles. So this is something they want to continue expanding even after the game comes out. More and more objectives, more and more ships, new play modes, new challenges, it just sounds great to me. Yeah, we're gonna make pretty short work of this objective. Not a lot to see on this second mission since you've already seen it. So what I'm doing right now is trying to plunder this map for as many resources as possible and just build up my fleet, get to the maximum number of interceptors and bombers and frigates, and also start building out some of these railgun corvettes. These guys are small and squishy, but they actually can do a pretty decent amount of damage to some capital ships, especially if you cluster a lot of them together. But yeah, um, I think we'll just go ahead and just exploit this map for everything it's worth, uh, build the largest fleet that I feel like I can, and then as soon as the enemy is sending too many ships my way and I'm going to take some losses, we'll just go ahead and initiate hyperspace. Which we're going to go ahead and do right about now. Alright, so this takes us into the third and final map of the run. And this is the real challenge. Everything's been leading up to this point. In this last map, you have three different points that you need to capture. They are production centers for different types of ships for our opponents. So that's going to include, let's say, a long-range fleet a surgical strike fleet and a force projection fleet and each one of them is going to spawn different types of enemies when we try to assault that point we need to take down all three of these in order to trigger the final boss and end the run 
So the first thing I'm obviously going to do is move my fleet in position to secure some resource points because I need to continue fueling my war machine. That's always going to be the case. But then after that, I think I'll go ahead and attack the long range fleet point first. It doesn't really matter what order you attack them in. You can do it however you want. It just depends on what ships are going to spawn in order to attack you and defend those points, right? So when I'm ready to attack, all I have to do is just move my fleet into down that direction. And if we can destroy all of the defenders and then just park a few ships on that point and wait for it to capture, kind of like capture the flag, um, we should be able to knock that off of the map. The enemy will spawn an extra wave to try and supplant you, so don't just like kill all the defenders, leave behind two strike craft, and then move on. You need to leave your fleet in position to defend at least once. But once that's done, and it has been captured, that point is now secure. You don't need to keep your ships there long term. So we can pull off and regroup and move on to the next point. Gosh, these beam assault frigates have been doing some serious work, by the way. They are shredding through the enemy capital ships. I mean, yeah, they're pretty short range, and there is a downside of that, but... I mean, man, if you can cluster enough of them together with some of these uh, artifact upgrades, their DPS output is phenomenal. Loving that. And actually, honestly, from the several times that I have played this solo, I, I will say Assault Craft in general have been my favorites so far. The enemy is going to always have lots of fighter and corvette support, and very strong Assault Frigates, even if you don't have the beam version, are really good at knocking those down. So you, I feel like you always need to have at least three of those in your fleet. And then you can kind of mix and match the other ships based on what you think you're going to be facing off against. Torpedo frigates are probably my favorite for taking down capital ships at a nice long range, but you know, you can always use the ion cannon frigates. That's not so bad. Suppression frigates are also pretty good at dealing with um, enemy strike craft because they do area of effect damage. Kind of like flak guns, I guess, in space. And uh, actually, there's also support frigates, too. Those things are pretty darn good. They can heal up your frigates. You don't need to have, like, more than one or two, because you can only ever have eight frigates in total, so you don't want to spend, you know, all of your population getting support when you don't have any DPS. But at least one or two of those can definitely make a difference. Okay, so at this point, we should be just about done capturing the third point in this map. We have dealt with all the defenders, we dealt with their defending wave, we just need to wait a little bit longer, and I'm going to go ahead and preemptively start moving the fleet in the direction that the end boss is going to spawn. Before he arrives, of course, I want to make sure I've topped off my fleet as much as possible, right? All the strike craft, all the corvettes, as many frigates as I'm able to have. We want all the DPS in position and ready to deal with this new threat immediately. Oh, there he is! Now you can see why! We have a battle cruiser. Now, don't let its size fool you. It may be just a bit bigger than a frigate, but this thing is loaded with so many gosh dang guns. It can shred through a lot of ships if you bring them in piecemeal. But because I have a fully decked out fleet ready and surrounding this guy, I think we're going to be able to burn him down pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was ready for this one. Okay, and his escorts can't save him at all. This battlecruiser is about to go critical. Boom! And with that, we have completed our first war game. Overall, I'd say that went pretty well. I mean, you can see here at the end screen that took about 45 minutes in total. I've had to go as fast as 30 minutes. Uh, we do get to see how many resources we collected, how many units we built, how many enemies we killed. A pretty fun way to compare yourself against your friends in the end, if you so desire. And the fun thing is, when you do finish up a war game, you're going to get some experience based on your performance. And that experience goes into a meta progression for the game. So as you level up, you'll unlock new starting fleets, so you'll have different starting craft and stuff like that or you'll unlock additional artifacts that you'll be able to discover, which kind of adds to the replayability value. In this preview version of the game, you can only go up to level 10, but my understanding from the devs is they definitely plan on expanding that a lot more when the game actually releases, so the meta progression is going to be a very big part of this. Lots of stuff to unlock, hopefully. So, that's a good look at what War Games is like from a solo perspective, and it's pretty fun just by itself, but I'm betting you guys would like to see a little bit of the mayhem that can follow in proper co-op play. And fortunately, I did have the opportunity to connect with a few other folks who had an early access version of these War Games. So, let's jump to some of that footage.
So this first game that I'm going to show some clips from uh, was just me with one other person, a simple duo game. And I went into this one deliberately, not like joining a Discord server, I wasn't able to talk live to this person, I just wanted to see what would happen if you jump into this without being able to communicate directly. And turns out, you can still do pretty darn well as long as your partner is going to be competent, but you're going to have to read off of each other at least a little bit. In this case, my partner was way more aggressive than I was. This guy was going for the objectives like right away. And uh, it worked. I mean, he, he was able to build up his fleets in time to do it. It was just, I felt like I was constantly chasing after him. Still though, we were able to split the resources even if we weren't communicating with each other. We were able to build up some self-sufficient, well-balanced fleets and kind of just play off of each other. And in the end, this ended up being the fastest run I ever had in the game. It was like only 30 minutes and we had absolutely no problem together. It worked out great. This second game I'm gonna show you was easily the most fun though. This was a three player game uh, it was actually the first time that I had played war games, so I was still figuring a lot of things out, but we were all sitting in a Discord server together and able to talk out our tactics and our build orders and what we were doing, and it really just changed the entire tenor of the game. It was really enjoyable that way. We were able to coordinate our attacks. Uh, it was easy enough for me to specialize my fleets, so I decided to go ahead and focus exclusively on assault and support frigates so I could take down fighters and heal my allies while they took on the long-range anti-capital ship classes. I'm gonna start building some support frigates in addition so I can provide some support for you guys. Oh, hell yeah. This ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> it's a good move. So between the three of us, we were in a really strong position to deal with every threat that faced us. Now, when do I get to build a battleship? <laughs> Sadly, not in this mode. Ah, that's a shame. Only ships producible by the carrier in this one. Darn. But there may be a surprise for you in the boss fight at the end. Okay, if the enemy has a battleship, that doesn't count. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we might get some backup. You never know it'll happen. Uh-huh. And at the end of the day, you're always going to have a different experience if you're able to talk live with people in multiplayer than if you're playing with bots or if you're just playing with someone over chat. I mean, the hilarity that ensued, for example, we had some really close calls where one of my allies almost got destroyed. That's a lot of bombs you're taking right now. Yeah, yeah, we'll get, we'll get the hell out of there. <laughs> oh man, I'm about to lose the carrier. No, 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 I'm coming in. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Wait, wait. Come on, take that corvette. <laughs> and you're good. All right. Whoop, and oh, we're attacked oh from the end point. Okay. Yeah, 1,500 health oh, <laughs> left. You're okay. No, no, no. As long as you have more than one, we're fine. Target yeah. Target. Down from 30k. Love it. Or another similar example where one of my partners lost his entire fleet and he was trying to run for it and the enemy was sending everything they had to chase him down. Yeah, Obsidian, I recommend you bring your carrier more toward the group over here because uh, I think you're, I think you're running the wrong way at the moment. That is the literal worst direction to say him. Oh no. Oh my god, look at him descend. Oh, oh you're so dead. What are you doing? All right, I'm me. sending all forces to try and save you. Um, uh, I'm bringing it in. Oh no! Turn around. <laughs> Where are you going? All right, fine. If you're not gonna turn around, go lower. Get some cover. Oh man, I mean, these are the kind of moments you really can't recreate with an AI. I mean, if you want to have the most out of this experience. You want to play with some other people. That is where the magic is going to happen in Homeworld 3. And honestly, that's one of the things that excites me the most about the addition of the war game mode into Homeworld 3. It's going to appeal to a completely different player base, right? I mean, there's always going to be PvP skirmishes. If you want to have competitive play, that's going to exist in the full release of the game. We can expect that. But the addition of a cooperative form of the game with roguelike elements to give you replayability, so you want to play with your friends again and again and again, I mean, that's cool. That's not something you see in real-time strategy games very often. And I'm honestly so impressed that the developers of Homeworld 3 are trying something so out of the box. That's a risk, but I think it's paying off. And then, of course, you know, I'm, I'm just happy I get a chance to play some Homeworld 3. I mean, it feels exactly like Homeworld 1 and 2. Like, all the base mechanics that were so fun in the first two games are there but just modernized and beautiful and seamless. It just plays so well. This has definitely made me very excited for when Homeworld 3 is going to be released again in February of 2024.
I do think that's a good place to end this particular video. Once again, a big thank you to Gearbox Publishing for getting me early access and for sponsoring this video. I had a heck of a lot of fun, and I hope you guys did as well. If you did enjoy this and you're intrigued and you want to learn more, well, of course, there will be that link in the description down below. Otherwise, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time. Ah!